would we call it historical fiction? We would say crime now, but it's The Great Hound of the Baskervilles by uh, Conan Doyle, uh, one of the longest of the Sherlock Holmes stories. And the reason that I come back to that is it has everything that good historical fiction needs and everything that a good crime story needs, which is an isolated setting, you know, Dartmoor in this case, a mystery that nobody can quite solve, a real sense of place and period and investigation. And of course, Holmes is brought down there to try to find out what is happening, that there is this monstrous creature that is uh, haunting uh, Dartmoor and is, is killing people and killing livestock. Um, but of course, everything about that story is so meticulous, so clever, that little by little, you start to learn the details of what it might be. So at first, of course, it could be this monster, the Hound of the Baskervilles, but then you strip the story away and what is really going on. And of course, it's a story of legacy and greed and people setting up a story in order to dupe uh, the people around about. And however many times you read it, it's still just as thrilling. It doesn't matter that you know the answer, who done it. Um, it is a wonderful piece, I would say, of historical fiction writing. Another novel that I come back to time and again is Philippa Gregory's first historical fiction, uh, The Wise Woman. And that novel has always stayed with me because it was a lesson in how to tell stories from a woman's point of view. And if you like the idea that the way that history presents women's stories is very, very partial and often writes women out of the story. And it is the story, as the title suggests, of a woman who lives slightly outside of the society that she is part of, uh, that her thirst for knowledge, her knowledge of herbs, her knowledge of healing, which of course everyone in the village relies upon, and this is you know set, set in the sort of 15th, 16th century, um, is a weapon that will be ultimately used against her. And how important it is for historical fiction to put women back in the history books, because there were many women um, who were condemned and executed and, uh, if you like, written out of history by male historians and the male courts, if you like, uh, judging those women. So The Wise Woman by Philippa Gregory, which is an amazing uh, piece of writing. Writers are often asked what the best ingredients are for a really, really good book. And I think we're the wrong people to ask. I think we should ask readers, <laughs> really. But for me, I would say there has to be jeopardy. There has to be the idea that somebody wants something and somebody else is going to prevent them from getting it. I think there has to be mystery, the idea that you're not entirely sure what's going on. Are you being duped by the characters or can you trust them? Um, I've always loved an unreliable narrator. I think there's got to be a real sense of place in historical fiction. You need to really believe that if you closed your eyes, you could open them again and you'd be there in the 16th century or the 17th century and feel that it's true. And I also think that you need to have a sense of the unexpected, uh, so that you think you know what sort of book you're going to read, but the minute you get immersed in it, it turns out to be an altogether different type of book. So surprise, uh, mystery, history, intrigue, and of course, very, very important that you have a good and satisfying ending. That old fashioned idea that you develop and you build and you build and you build and you build till the big climax where everything comes together at once. That's what you need for good, exciting fiction.